So, my shiny new vertical DRO kit has finally arrived from eBay. Let's see how easy it is to fit and what it does for our aesthetic feeling. Okay, so in fitting this vertical DRO, I'm going to have to rejig these electrics that uh, I originally did for the Hall Effect speed sensor. This was a bit of a bodge. This is a 3D printed box, which I did, and it wasn't a good size because every time I turn this handle, it conflicted with the edge there. So I'm going to shift this to the other side. And the plan is to use the 12 volt transformer, which um, we repurposed to go inside this box to run the Hall Effect sensor. We're going to add a buckboard to it, which will siphon off a 6 volt supply for the for the DRO display. And the reason we're doing that is because I found those things that, that use those little pill batteries, they just seem to eat batteries. And I don't want to be messing around with that every time I turn this on. I don't use this mill every day. I'd be surprised if I used it every week. So um, I just want to be able to switch the thing on and for it to work. So now I'm going to remove all of that and use this new box which I have 3D printed and taken the trouble this time to spray in the right colour. I've discovered that the paint code for Sieg Red is in fact Carmen Red and the RAL paint code is RAL302. I'll leave a reference to that in this video's description. I'll also leave a download link to this box from Thingiverse, this little enclosure, if that's any good to you. Okay, so this is the little box of tricks I've got to take the 12 volt feed from the 12 volt transformer, which I fitted for the Hall Effect sensor, and we'll pump out what I'm sort of assuming is gonna be six volts uh, to power the DRO display. The DRO display takes two three volt batteries I'm sort of assuming, for no really good reason, that they're wired in series rather than parallel. It doesn't really matter. The input on this, as I say, is 3 volts to 40 volts. The output is 1.5 to 35, so um, there's plenty of flexibility there. So you plumb your input voltage in of whatever you've got between those bounds. You set your multimeter across the two output terminals and you twiddle this screw here until your multimeter is showing you the voltage that you want. It really is that simple. I believe there might even be a little light that lights up. So I got a pack of five of these off Amazon for eight quid, eight pounds UK, um, which is probably under 10 bucks US, just to give you an idea. So this is the DRO readout. So I've taken all the screws out, of which amazingly there were nine in all. Let's just remove the back very carefully. So I've set the multimeter to read resistance. Let's bung the display on. When I touch the electrodes we go to zero that shows zero resistance let's have another go at this there's the plus I think so on that one that doesn't make any difference and that one oh that one we can see there is zero resistance okay now let's try what I think is probably going to be the negative and try that at the top. And that is, now oh, that's still showing a little resistance there, but it's showing less resistance, which is interesting. We touch it there, that is zero resistance. So that top hole 
is zero resistance. So those seem to be the ones. Right, let's get these soldered in. But what I've done is I've put the batteries in. Um, I plugged the DRO in, I put the batteries in, plug the DRO in just to test. So you can see as I move the DRO, it's changing the numbers. So we know that works. Those two wires are the wires I've just put into the main board. So I'm just going to check and see with the multimeter um, what sort of voltage we're getting out, what sort of polarity we're getting out. So let me touch what I think is the positive. Positive to positive and then to negative. Now that's very interesting because although it's showing me positive polarity, it's showing that I'm only getting three volts out of it. Now I'm kind of surprised by that. What I assumed was that two three volt batteries in there would give me a six volt output. And in fact, it isn't. It's giving me a three volt output. So they must be wired in parallel, is it, rather than series. OK, well, unfortunately, we seem to have lost some footage there. However, in this box here, this little enclosure I made, it's just the 12 volt transformer. What is now um, kind of daisy chained off the 12 volt output is this board that we looked at earlier and that we've just soldered up, just leaving it hovering there at the moment. These are the output wires up here, and there's the ends round there. What I have to do now is connect this board back up, put the power, the 240 volt input to the 12 volt transformer, hook that back into this little daughter board, switch the thing on, <clears throat> hope it doesn't go bang and then put the multimeter on the end of these wires and use this tiny little brass screw I don't know if you can see it hang on let's have some light on the subject can you see that a bit better that there is a little brass screw and we twiddle that until the output is showing three volts then we'll go and do some soldering on the DRO board, hook it up to that, and all being well, we will get a readout. OK, well, it's very boring seeing people wire stuff back in. It's not, uh, it's not exactly complicated. As I think I've shown on other videos, you've got the live at the top, which is the brown, two brown wires, and you've got the neutral just immediately underneath it, which is um, the two blue wires. So I'll bring you back when that's all wired in. Right, well, I've just twisted the two output wires, which we now hope are carrying three volts. Just loosely twisted together. Going to quickly turn this on. Oh, and I've taken the batteries out, so. And that's looking very healthy. And when we move the slider on the DRO, that seems to be doing its job. We are now using 240 volts via 12 volts via 3 volts to drive our DRO. So now I can crack on and fit the mechanical slider itself. Let's hope nothing gets hot or blows up in the meantime. I'm just feeling the back. There doesn't seem to be any excess heat being generated. I think I'm cautiously going to call that a, a nominal win at this stage. We'll see how it lasts over time. OK, well, they give you um, a bunch of brackets with the DRO, none of which are any use whatsoever. Had a quick look at the instructions, which are uh, clear as day. Obviously, an old established English firm would be my guess. So I ended up making my own bracket from um, a bit of scrap steel. The idea is to mount it thusly, more or less. I didn't have any wedge-headed screws, unfortunately. They're three mil screws. So I'm using the offcuts from my bracket uh, as standoffs, and I hope that will give me enough clearance for the slider to go up and down. OK, so there it is, all neatly screwed into place. 
it lines up really nicely there are no undue forces acting on it it's uh, very smooth indeed so there we are we're all wired in i've tidied up the wiring in this conduit um i've left enough slack on the back for the data cable to have enough room to travel watch the dro change as the as the head goes down and back as the head goes back up my uh, my little enclosure there working pretty well i think let me get it in a place where the light works it's not a bad color match so that's it for this job quite happy with how that came out the next job is to change this um, spindle, I don't know what you call it, spider handle, never like those things, and in its place mount this hand wheel instead. Much easier to work with in my opinion, and at the same time replace these wheels, hand wheels here with these rather larger ones. Again, allows for much more fine tuning um, and is more ergonomic for my increasingly arthritic hands. So that's it for now. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you next time.